About seven months ago, I created a video that delved into what happened to Kyle Crane after the events of the first Dying Light game. That video has really ignited the imagination of a lot of Dying Light fans out there. If you haven't actually seen that video yet, you can check it out by clicking on the link on screen now, or I'll also put a link in this video's description. At the very end of that video, even after analysing all of the clues and the hints found in the game, I had to admit that the current whereabouts of Kyle Crane during the events of Dying Light 2 are completely unknown. But that didn't stop a lot of people in the comments from speculating and theorising about Crane's current whereabouts. So I just wanted to take some time today to go over some of those comments and apply my admittedly limited Dying Light knowledge to your theories so we can get one step closer to finding out exactly what happened to Kyle Crane. Seraphim of Raph starts us off today with this statement. Why people asking this dumb question? He's dead. First off, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Only dumb answers. And second, as far as we know, Kyle is alive. Unless Seraphim here is referring to his zombified state as being a lack of life. But if the mother is anything to go from, Kyle turning into a sentient volatile would not be the end of his humanity. So I think it's completely safe to say that, yes, Kyle Crane is indeed alive. Our next comment comes from Mojo Assassin, who, I assume, didn't even watch my video. For context, the true canon ending is when Kyle Crane sets off the nuke, not fighting the mother. Kyle Crane caused the end of Heron, that's why it's mentioned in the game trailer. It's a tie-in to the original Dying Light. As much as I enjoy hearing people's takes on the story, this is factually incorrect, and I said as much in my previous video. Techland themselves confirmed that the nuke ending was not canon, and Kyle in fact did become a sentient volatile. I, w I, I think you are know that the end of the Dying Light was Dying Light following and our lovely Kyle Crane get out mm -hmm. from the quarantine, unfortunately with a virus and he spread all of the pandemic stuff on the world. He's the first one that spread it out. And that's a fact that even Jack Kennedy here understands. I mean, the canon ending is 100% killing the mother and becoming a zombie. Like, how would Spike survive a nuke? So Kyle will surely return in DLC or in Dying Light 3. There has been a lot of speculation revolving around Kyle returning in Dying Light 2 DLC or even potentially Dying Light 3. We still have no official word on whether this will be happening, but you can bet that Techland leaving Kyle's fate so open-ended gives them immense creative freedom to bring him back to the series in a big way. We haven't actually heard any news of Dying Light 2's second DLC in quite a long time, so hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll actually start to get some answers. Following on from this, Majin Sharma imagines what Kyle's return could look like. Imagine Kyle Crane becomes a villain, just as Prototype 1's Alex Mercer. I'm not gonna lie, I actually love the idea of Kyle becoming a playable villain of sorts. I have a lot of nostalgia for Prototype 1 and 2, and especially love the unique perspective that the game puts you in. Being a literal virus spreading through the world, all while trying to stop the spread of the very same virus, was such a brilliant premise, and I could really see something similar being possible with the reintroduction of Kyle Crane to Dying Light. Although that being said, Conrad Foyle has a slightly different take on Kyle's return, which does sound equally as interesting. An idea I had with the sequel, and Crane being a volatile, is that he is actually around the city, but acting in the shadows, unseen. He certainly has the skills, and being enhanced with the benefits of a volatile, maybe even the more mature ones we see in Dying Light 2, would make him one tough ally. Imagine having an important location, surrounded by infected and the meanest of thugs. You can't go near, because no matter what, you die. But suddenly, a figure makes your entry just a tad easier, and disappears almost immediately after. Okay look, I'm absolutely no authority, but I really do believe that when we see Kyle's return, he will most likely be a non-playable character. 
With Dying Light 2 putting us in the fresh shoes of Aiden, this tells me that the series wants to tell more stories than just that of Kyle Crane. That's of course not to say that Kyle won't factor into those stories in some way, but I believe that he will likely be in a supporting role, potentially even the villain of a future instalment. Okay, so moving on from that, I actually have a massive surprise comment from none other than YouTube's very own Mr. Beast, who says, Big Easter Eggs is a brilliant channel. You guys should definitely like and subscribe. Do you know what, Mr. Beast? I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, let's get back on track with the video. Going back now to the possibility of Kyle becoming a villain, there seems to be a lot of discussion around Kyle actually becoming the Night Hunter, just as Snowcat9308 says. For the record, Kyle Crane didn't just become Ascension Volatile, he became the Night Hunter, the play control zombie in the Beat the Zombie game mode. He makes the exact same screech thing when he leaves the quarantine. I've seen some comments saying that the devs have debunked Kyle being the Night Hunter and that the Be The Zombie mode is not canon. Unfortunately though, I haven't been able to confirm those claims outright. But if you do have any insights into when or where the devs might have said this, I'd really love to know in the comments below. Personally though, I agree with the devs. There is way more evidence that Kyle ended up as a sentient volatile just as the mother did. The Night Hunter is a different beast entirely. Granted, there are some similarities between the Night Hunter and Kyle. A number of their abilities are very similar, and there's even some reused animations. But these are likely just to keep the gameplay consistent and balance the multiplayer aspect of the game. Also, can we just say that the Night Hunter attacks literally happen to Kyle Crane? So unless the Night Hunter somehow can also time travel, it's very unlikely they're linked. Lil Noah 752 actually hits pretty close to home with a theory that I mostly support. A guy told me his theory, so basically, Carl became a volatile and started roaming the world. But Waltz found him and started experimenting with his DNA on children. And one of them, Aiden called, well, you can kind of agree that the same things happen to each of them. Seizures and that, you can also see it by the animations, so similar. Now what I like about this theory is there's even some evidence in Dying Light 2's cut content that directly links Kyle Crane and Waltz. Cut dialogue from Waltz himself mentions Kyle, but since this was removed before launch, it can't be considered canon. All test results reports are gone, and with them the chance for a cure. I've lost any hope of gaining access to Kyle Crane. Well, I think that's just about enough diving into your comments for one day, but sadly, we really are no closer to finding out what happened to Kyle Crane. 